Yeah, yeah. We, we talked a lot about some of the guys who have left Vancouver over the past few weeks. Uh, before maybe asking you about like, individual players and maybe what they've kind of lost there and maybe the feeling around the, fa- the fan base, I, I'd like to ask, during the negotiations before free agency began with these guys, or even maybe the lack of negotiations if you want to go there, what happened? What led to Stetcher leaving? What led to Toffoli walking? What happened, Harmon? I think a lot of them uh, were different scenarios. Like if you're talking about Toffoli, um, quite simply, I don't think the Canucks made a serious effort to try and bring him back. I think they looked at the limited space they had um, and they wanted to ensure that they had that flexibility available for defensemen. And they capitalized on that by bringing Nate Schmidt in. Um, beyond that, if you're talking about some of the other guys, Markstrom, Tanev, Stetcher, then I think they kind of pushed the deadline um, and and they tried to play hardball with them. And I think what happened is when you're playing a hardball, and, and this is the classic cliche in negotiations, who, whoever um, has the upper hand, whoever has more leverage, whoever, whoever um, can walk away and be more, whoever is more comfortable walking away has more leverage in negotiations. And I think what ended up happening is Vancouver essentially said, we've got strict terms on Markstrom, for instance, they didn't want to go six years for Tanev. They didn't want to go four years. So initially Vancouver was willing to walk away. They made their firm offers they drew their line in the sand of what they were comfortable offering which again i think was the right decision given um, where these players are at in in their respective stages of their career maybe not so much for stetcher but definitely for for uh tanev and uh, markstrom and i think these players in, in in normal circumstances maybe they would have been pressed into signing and caving at, at some point close to closer to the deadline to deals Um, like the ones Vancouver offered. But I think what happened is at the end of the day, Markstrom cut six years, right? Like he had uh, the opportunity to walk away to a much better offer. And and when when Vancouver tried upping some of their offers, it was just a little bit too late. And same thing with Tanev. Um, And it just sort of came to be where I was surprised that Markstrom, I think what happened is sort of late with the playoffs, the narrative of him completely changed. Like I remember talking to people around the league about Markstrom. And for the most part, people didn't really recognize him as an upper echelon workhorse starter. I think the industry was still a little bit behind in catching up reputation wise for what Markstrom had sort of become. But then we saw that he finished fourth in Vesna trophy voting. And I think what happened in the meantime is the industry caught up in their evaluation of him. So I think the difference was if you're talking about Marks from midseason and the Canucks were negotiating, I think the belief then was, I think it was hard to see a team ponying up and paying Marks from six by six, mm-hmm. but it's just sort of last minute as the market matured and teams came to recognize the caliber of player that uh, Marks from really is that uh, that situation changed and it gave Marks from so much more leverage than had initially been anticipated and um, similar sort of thing for Tanev being healthy for a full season, um, being a key contributor in that playoff run uh, that just gave those players a little bit more leverage and a little bit more buying power than Vancouver was willing to uh, dish out. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the show, we, we do have a main focus on the Leafs and the Canadians. Ignore all the carry price stuff behind me. Let's just pretend that's not there. Um, selfish question here. What should Habs fans look forward to in a player like Tyler Toffoli? A lot. I think when the perfect fit for Toffoli is alongside, I think, uh, a dynamic center who can create space because Toffoli isn't the quickest player um, in terms of moving north south. Um, he isn't going, going to be someone who leads the play up the ice uh, as far as zone, zone exits and entries. Um, like, don't expect him to be this flashy player who. Um, makes things happen. But what you maybe lack for in flash with Toffoli is a lot of substance and being able to find open ice 
Um, he creates a lot of chances for himself. He's a pure shoot first player. Like he's a pretty good playmaker too, but what you're getting in him is uh, a really solid trigger man. Someone who, again, if you have a center who can sort of break plays open, like, and this is why he was such a great fit with Pedersen. What Pedersen would do is he would draw so much of uh, attention from defenders. And what happens with a player like Pedersen is, is he has a gravity about him where it just opens up ice in other parts in other parts of the rink, right? It's kind of like having a, a, a lethal three-point shooter in basketball. Like if you have Steph Curry on the court, he's going to open up extra room on the court because teams have to respect his shot. And it's the same way with a dynamic playmaking center. And so if you have that dynamic playmaking center, he's going to create that extra real estate for someone like Toffoli. And once Toffoli has those open pockets, he his offensive instincts are so sharp in being able to find, um, in being able to find those soft spots near near the ice, and being able to find um, those high danger scoring areas, and that's where he's going to feast as someone who can finish, um, as someone who's going to get a lot of scoring chances, who's going to shoot a lot, and I think that's where you're really looking forward to Toffoli is as this trigger man, who's really smart, um, who can read off of elite offensive players, um, who especially on Vancouver's top power play unit, he took it to the next level with his playmaking below the goal line. Like I know the Habs have had issues um, with their power play. So uh, again, I'm not sure if uh, Montreal can sort of take their man advantage to to the next level, because I still think that uh, a guy like Toffoli isn't going to be your A1 or or, or, or 1B option even um, as far as being a primary threat. Like for Vancouver, JT Miller, uh, Elias Pedersen, they were your main threats. Um, and same sort of thing. They opened up extra real estate, and that's where Toffoli and Horvat really were able to thrive. So I'm not sure if he can be a difference maker uh, without having elite talent on PP1, but no doubt that he has the capacity uh, to be uh, a top uh, player as, again, sort of he's not a tra- traditional net front guy, but he can pop out and, and just be a really good playmaker below the goal line. So um, and at four two five, I I really love the deal for Montreal. I think he can. He's just a legit top six piece. Uh, and I think that uh, the way his game is built, you only signed him for four years, and he's twenty eight years old. Um, I'd be pretty comfortable making that bet if I was Montreal. Mm-hmm. You're getting me excited now. So so <laughs> excited. Um, all right, Daniel. Just quickly before Daniel goes. It- we were talking about Markstrom before, and I just had one question because I, I really hopped on uh, this train. Was that what is the kind of senses why he chose Calgary? Because I know Edmonton was offering him that seventh year. Yeah, I'm not sure for for I'm not 100 percent certain that Edmonton did offer that seventh year. I, I know that there were that there were um, sort of rumors about if that happened or not. Uh, but the six by six offer, like I heard on the day before free agency from someone that uh, a team was ready to offer him six by six. And at that point, I, um, I, I figured that it was probably Calgary. Uh, and at that point, I think the friendship that Markstrom has with Elias Lindholm, like those guys, those two guys are best friends. So I think right. that really played a part um, because I mean, think about it. If you're in Markstrom shoes, Edmonton, if you compare Edmonton and Calgary, let's have, for hypothetical purposes say that they offered pretty similar terms in, uh, as far as money. Uh, at that point, it becomes what city do you like better? What team would you prefer to play on? And I think A, uh, Edmonton is very cold. It's not a, a desirable market. Um, I, I definitely heard from... Uh, from people and, and I know that Matt Sakaris locally was saying he doesn't think Markstrom will want to go to Edmonton, the city, uh, just because of, I mean, I've been there. Th- I, I was there two, two or three times uh, last year <laughs> on the road. And let me tell you like, no disrespect to everyone, anyone that lives in Edmonton, it is cold. <laughs> and if it, and if you do not like the cold, you'll not like Edmonton. So if I was a player, Personally, I would not want to sign in Edmonton. So I think I can kind of get that angle and then be, I mean, 
his best friend plays for Calgary. Like, yeah. it's as simple as that. If your best friend played for Calgary and he's pitching you on, hey, man, we can play here. And, and Lindholm's on a long-term contract as well. We can play here together forever. Like, these times, these these guys spend so much time together in Sweden in the offseason just hanging out. Um, I think that's kind of what made the difference for, for Markstrom in choosing Calgary over Edmonton. Right, right. Okay. I was just curious because playing with – Playing with Cal, playing in Calgary, or playing with two top, arguably yeah, top ten players definitely. in the league, and it's again Edmonton not being able to get someone th- to come there. I think the friendship aspect was number one, like above right. the Edmonton City factor. I think that was, I think that was a primary motivating um, factor again for Markstrom there. Forget Man. about Kachuk. You got to give Lindholm the C next. <laughs> yes. Gets Markstrom, then half of Vancouver follows him over to Calgary. Dang, good for him. Good for him. 